I invite you to remain standing as you are able as we receive God's word for us this day. It comes from the Gospel of Luke. Um, Perhaps this is a familiar story uh, for many of you this day. Familiar words from Mary's Magnificat. Um, Mary's Magnificat, when Mary has found out she is going to receive Jesus, um, she offers these powerful words. Let us receive them this morning. Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud with their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. It is such a joy uh, to be with you all today, and um, it is such a joy to be with you in worship in this time of Advent um, as we remember, as we celebrate, as we look towards and prepare for the coming of Christ. It It is just It is such a joy. I'm so excited. Let us join in an attitude of prayer. God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So we have had a number of movies made in the past mm, 10, 15 years, um, a, a large number of movies made about superheroes. In this year alone, between Marvel and DC and all of the movies that have been coming out and TV shows that have been launched, we've had nine films launched just in this year. Um, But over the years, these universes have come alive from comic books to the big screen and Spider-Man and Wonder Woman and Batman and Superman and Captain America. And I'm sure that there are many, many more um, that you are beloved to you. But these characters have come alive and they have been eaten up and consumed by the world. As people flock to the theaters to see that which can give them hope and encouragement and life and energy, there is something about these superheroes that are just captivating for us. As they have the power to change, as they have the power to do amazing things in the world, as they have the power to fix those things which we humans sometimes wish we could have the power to fix. But the thing about these superheroes and what makes them so beloved and what makes them so wonderful and what makes them heroes and good guys in the first place is that they do have all of this power, but they use it for good. They use it for good because power in and of itself It's not a good thing. You can do a lot of damage when power goes unchecked, when it is used for evil and bad purposes. And we find that in those superhero films, right? That you have those who are using and abusing power and you have the good guys fighting and using their power to try and combat that which seeks to destroy the world. Power, might, balanced with goodness with mercy. Over the course of Advent here in the life of Pulaski Heights, we are looking at the scripture from Isaiah 9-6, where the prophet proclaims that one is coming to be born into humanity. A son will be born for us, a child given to us. All authority, Isaiah said, will rest on his shoulders. 
and he shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. So each week we are taking and looking at one of those names. We have devotional booklets available for you uh, out in the lobby if you would like to pick one up. They're also available online um, throughout this time together. Today we are focusing on the second names and it is the second Sunday of Advent, Mighty God. That word given there in Hebrew in the book of Isaiah for mighty is the word gibor, gibor. And gibor, that word for might is used to describe um, the warriors, uh, the conquerors in the stories of the heroes of ancient Israel. Those who conquer, those who uh, go forth into battle and win and save the people. Those who are wealthy, those who have prestige, those who have influence. Gibor, might, the might of God, the might of the one who is coming. But when we read Mary's Magnificat, we read about the might of God, right? The powerful arm that has taken down kings from their thrones, she proclaims. But we also read that that might is, is tampered and is paired with God's mercy. The might of God is lived out in mercy for those who need God. In Mary's Magnificat, we find her, a young girl, preparing to give birth to this child, the child that is given to us, the son that is sent for us. Mary is a young girl, a girl who herself would have had very little power, very little power. She would not have been one that was considered Gibor for the time in the ancient East. And yet this young woman was sent an angel to tell her that she would give birth to this child, that she would give birth to the son of God who would come to save the world. And so she does what many people who were nervous and who need help in life do. She goes to a beloved friend, a cousin, her cousin, Elizabeth. She goes to her older cousin who is also pregnant with a child that turns out to be John the Baptist. And she goes to Elizabeth for guidance, for, for wisdom, for counsel. And as she goes and greets Elizabeth, John the Baptist leaps in Elizabeth's womb. And Elizabeth calls Mary blessed. And Mary recognizes that. And she offers these words of proclamation, these words of acclamation, these words of the Magnificat, proclaiming the power of the one to whom she is bringing into the world. One of the songs that gets me a little bit every Christmas season is the song, Mary Did You Know? Because what I want to say every time I hear Mary did you know is to say, yes, of course she knew. Haven't you read the Magnificat? Yes, of course she knew that Jesus was coming to do all of these amazing things because she proclaims it right there. She knew that the one that she was bearing, the one that she was bringing into the world would come with the might, the power, the gabor of God to enact the power of mercy for those that were hurting. She knew that this one that was coming would do great things, and she was a part of it. Mary is often called in the history of the church in Greek, she was given the name Theotokos, which means God-bearer, God-bearer. She was bearing God into the world. And many times I think that we humans believe that 
if we are to represent God or to bear God in the world, that we have to be particularly good people. That we have to be um, particularly pious, particularly perfect. That we have to be people who are superheroes, <laughs> right? We need some kind of superhuman power to be able to bear God into the world. But that wasn't Mary. Mary was a young woman with little power in society, little power through the world, but because of the might of God that lifts up the powerless, she became the Theotokos. She became the God bearer and she, this young woman, bore Jesus into the world. This young woman brought forth the powerful one who would come to continue to lift up the powerless, to lift up the humble, to lift up the oppressed and to bring about a transformation of this world where we often think of power as that which is lorded over, as that which can destroy. But God's might is always coupled with God's mercy. God's might is God's mercy. The power of God lived out through Jesus Christ was not one of a conquering, mighty warrior hero figure. I mean, God could have come to earth in any form, right? God could have come to earth in any form. God could have dropped down into the earth as a fully formed warrior and simply fixed everything with the sword conquered everything with the power and the might, the gabor of God. But instead, God sent God's son into the world as a humble baby through this woman with no power. Christ was born to live with us, to live in the midst of the hurt in the midst of the suffering, in the midst of the oppression and to work through sacrificial love to bring about transformation. One of the beloved superhero movies that has come out uh, fairly recently, a few years ago, was the movie Wonder Woman. Diana, who later becomes Wonder Woman, is an Amazonian princess. Um, she is a warrior. She is, she is training to, to be this Amazonian warrior. And yet, uh, she, she, who happens to live in this, in this kind of secluded paradise of sorts, is confronted with what is going on in the rest of the world, which in the comics is World War II, in the movie it's World War I. A pilot comes and lands and tells her that there is a war going on, which is a war to end all wars. And so Diana, Wonder Woman, goes to help humanity fight against the evils that can destroy humanity. And at the end of the film, she is fighting against Ares, the god of war, who is partnering with the evil, with the Germans, to kill off and eradicate humans from the earth because Ares, the god of war, says that humans are garbage. They're trash. They can't do anything good. They only seek to destroy. They are not worth life. They don't deserve life. But Diana, witnessed human capacity for love. She witnessed human capacity for sacrifice. And so she tells Aries, it's not about deserving. It's about love. And humans do have the capacity for that. And so they should not be eradicated. They should be saved. And when she has an opportunity at the end of that movie, 
She's given a huge tank. Uh, she can lift up cars. That's her super, part of her superpower, right? This superhuman strength. And she lifts up a tank. And the evil doctor, Dr. Poison, who has created havoc with the Germans and who has created this situation in which humans are to be eradicated is lying there in front of her and she has an opportunity to destroy. But she doesn't in that moment. Because it's not about whether humans deserve to be saved. It's about that all of them have the capacity for love and for transformation. Her might was coupled in that moment with mercy. Like any hero, any good superhero would do. But we don't have to be Wonder Woman. We don't have to be superheroes in order to be bearers of God's mighty mercy in the world. There are a million different ways that we can participate in God's work of caring for those who are vulnerable, of sitting by and taking the hand of those who are suffering, of understanding that people have a hard time this year and so allowing them to process through grief in difficult ways of providing gifts for children at Wakefield Elementary School. Many of you are youth who are gonna go do that today and we're so thankful for that. That is an act of showing the mighty mercy of God. Each and every one of us can be theotokos, can be God bearers. You don't have to be superheroes. We just have to have hearts open to Jesus, hearts open to the power of Christ to come into our lives, to come into the world through us and bring about new life and transformation. It is my hope and my prayer, friends, that this week we can find ways to bear God in the world we can find ways to participate in God's mighty acts of mercy and love and transformation and healing for this world that so desperately needs it. May we, like Mary, proclaim the mighty acts that God has done, and may we commit ourselves to living into those acts as well.